So we started Green Tomato Cars uh, nearly six years ago, in 2006, um, and the idea was to set up a minicab, quality minicab company that was going to be high on quality, price competitive, um, but also offer a green service as a bonus. Uh, we wanted to show that the green alternative was going to be at least as good as the conventional options that were out there at the time. I was a lawyer uh, in the city, so lots of lights left on late into the night um, and taxis going home at three o'clock in the morning, sort of thinking there should be a better way to do this. I think by the time I'd been doing it for a few years, I was concerned that there wasn't going to be a huge amount more creative input uh, and excitement going forward. Uh, and the trade-off with the, with the very late, late nights was, wasn't one that I really liked. So we started the business renting four Toyota Prius, getting someone to put the green tomatoes on the side of them, uh, and a fair few funny looks from other road users. Um, we recruited four drivers, got our IT in place, and from day one it was myself and Tom, my business partner, who founded the business with me. We were up between us covering the phones, taking the bookings, doing the dispatch between five o'clock in the morning and one o'clock the following morning, six days a week, living in a flat nearby, all classic startup mentality, uh, on a shoestring, very exciting, very hard work. We were fortunate um, to get some really good early coverage of what we were doing. We were the first ones to, to do something like this, to set up a green business uh, in the mini cab uh, passenger car sphere uh, and to market ourselves very deliberately as being environmentally friendly. So we got a lot of coverage, we got some early adopters, uh, Clarence House, B Sky B, Innocent Drink, some really good big names who fitted perfectly with what we were doing. Uh, so it grew pretty quickly. Yeah, so both Tom and I, when we were starting the business up, very deliberately got experience as drivers for competitors. Uh, Tom drove for Addison Lee, I drove for a company called Blueback, who were subsequently taken over by Addison Lee. Um, both to get under the skin of the industry we were getting into, but actually just as importantly to understand what it felt like and was like to be a driver, um, because we felt it was especially important to just be able to empathise and to be able to talk to our drivers who are absolutely the face of our business uh, on as, as level and open a playing field as we could do. So it was a big part of, of how we started up the business and, and still is today that we feel that we can treat and relate to everybody who's involved in the business as, as fairly and, and reasonably as possible. I think the, the number one advantage for us, first mover, was really that we made a noise and all the interest and all the coverage and awareness was about our brand. So almost hand in hand, the brand fed the coverage and the coverage fed the brand. Um, and in an industry where branding is particularly low on people's priorities and what people think about it, it really was an opportunity to stand out. Um, so that was, that was the, big, the big bonus and I guess we'd taken a big risk in terms of the brand so that was the, that was the payoff. Yeah, it was absolutely fundamental in what we were doing to be almost as different as possible. Uh, we felt that the, the minicab industry was, had a bit of a reputation maybe for being a bit cowboy, a bit notorious, a bit dodgy, um, for being pretty bland, A to B cars, names like that. Uh, and we really wanted to give the environmental business as high visibility as we possibly could. Hence coming up with a slightly ludicrous name in Green Tomato Cars and in putting the Green Tomatoes on the cars as well to make sure that as many people could see it and know about it. And even when we communicate with passengers, we send them a text message, let them know the car's there and it says your chariot awaits 
even little touches like that that just bring a bit of humour and personality to what we're doing, really key to what we do. Have we inspired other cab firms? Um, well, there's five or six direct copycats, which is very flattering. Obviously, they're also vying for the same market share that we are. But actually, overall, I think they increase the awareness uh, for all of us rather than being too much of a negative. Uh, there are at least two other companies who've named themselves after fruit or vegetable um, in London alone. And there's also green bean cars in Leeds. So uh, actually the extent to which people will, will imitate us and, and thereby flatter us is, is quite uh, surprising sometimes. Yeah, I'd like to think we've got all the, the pieces in the, in the jigsaw now. So what's great is that the, the heart of the business in terms of the people have been with us for a number of years now. Uh, we've had drivers who've become driver managers. We've got telephonists who've become credit controllers and a whole lot of sort of internal promotion and development, which is important. Uh, but also we've had to bring in experience from outside um, because, like you say, when you become a proper a proper company and you know you're having to plan ahead uh, then then you need to bring in experience if you don't have it yourselves and clearly I've started up the company so I've got lots of starting up experience but I haven't got lots of growing experience for the company so we've brought in uh, a couple of really excellent recruits uh, from competitors who've come to us because they've done it before uh, they've seen what's worked and what hasn't worked uh, and they're excited about being part of Green Tomato Cars, growing hopefully in a better way than where they were before. Originally, we funded the business. I put in what I had, um, which was a relatively small inheritance um, from my grandmother who passed away just before we started the business up. Uh, Tom had actually sold his flat, so he put in the biggest chunk of capital from that. Uh, which was necessary for, for getting the equipment and the vehicles. Um, uh, one of the shareholders, who was Tom's mum, came on board from the outset. Um, and our fourth shareholder came on board after nine months. So nine months into our first year, and he'd actually been a passenger in one of the cars, called me when we were picking him up from the airport, and he was in his car on the way into London, and said, I love this, how can I get involved? So that was quite a, a, good, a good situation to have. Biggest challenge is running quality, quality minicab operation um, are really traffic, cars, customers, drivers. Um, there's a lot of links in the chain that need to be right, uh, in particular how you take a booking. Um, and if anybody makes a small mistake, then that can impact completely on the experience. I always say if you go to a restaurant and your soup's brought out and it's not quite hot enough, well, you can just send it back to the kitchen. Five minutes later, it'll come back and it's exactly what you wanted. If we make a small mistake with a booking, or if the booker makes a small mistake, then the car's going to the wrong place or it's going to the right place on the wrong day and, and somebody's going to be seriously inconvenienced. And it's typically a very stressful time for people if that happens. So getting it right in the first place and equally important, that when it doesn't go right, that you deal with it in the most professional and proactive manner that we can do. Uh, and again, hopefully that's something that sets us apart. Hopefully we don't make any more mistakes than our competition, but how we deal with it when, when those mistakes happen is absolutely critical. For Green Tomato Cars, the future, hopefully very bright, um, significant growth of our operations in and around London. Um, we are looking to franchise or something like a franchise outside London, whether that's other cities in the UK that we're looking at and we've been approached by, or possibly even outside the UK altogether, which would be very exciting. Uh, I like the idea of having green tomatoes at both ends of the Channel Tunnel, for example. I think that would be a nice, nice symmetry. Um, and also looking at other technology, uh, one of the things we've always been keen on is, is innovation and I think that's help, helped set us apart. So whether it's apps for sharing taxis or 
possibly even other modes of transports that currently aren't within the Green Tomato framework. Uh, to bring those in could be really op interesting opportunity as well.